Okay, we are back. <laughs> Baadaye kuna tabia zingine. You know, 2014 I hope kuna tabia zitaisha. You know, you cannot be waiting for someone kwa stage. Eh, nilikuwa hapa tu nikikungoja. You can't be waiting. What poster is this? You know, when you're waiting for someone, you need to have purpose. Hata you know, ha ha, nimekori kungoja. I've been here too. You can Sasa mtu unaanza hadithi na mtu purpose. <laughs> okay? Now, by the way, life is like a is like a book. Every morning you write a new chapter. Every morning you read a new chapter. And by the way, it's because of some of the reason I had a privilege of interviewing a man of God, a leader, a government uh, advisor. He an advice mpaka ma president. Ameandika vitabu lots of motivational inspired millions has world bestsellers is a man of God, is a doctor. We had an exclusive interview mimi na yeye, anaitwa Dr. Miles Monroe. This year I hope you'll have purpose in your life ukiamka kila morning just like a gazelle have purpose mali unakimbia and you have to keep on running because the moment you stop then you'll be caught up by life and this as we said is the is your year is a year in ile mwaka unasikia in ile nilikuwa nimengojea kama kuna mwaka ulikuwa unaongojea ni 2014 okay he is introducing dr miles munro exclusive on churchill show i hope you be blessed exclusive Show. In Kenya we say karibu sana. Karibu sana. Yeah. Yes, welcome. You're welcome. Mambo, mambo is forever. Mambo, 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 mambo. Okay. And then they say poa. Poa. What is it? Is we cool? Oh yeah. my goodness. Poa. Poa. Poa, poa. I think I found my teacher. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Mambo, mambo. Poa. poa. Mambo. Poa. 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 <laughs> And then you do this. <laughs> All right. Karibu sana. Welcome. Uh, It's just so great to have you here poa. in Kenya. Poa. 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 Yeah. Why Kenya? Why Kenya? Why Kenya? Kenya yeah. is a fulfillment of a dream. Right. Uh, I've been invited to Kenya yeah. over the past 20 years. Right. Invitations every year. Yeah. Coming to this beautiful country. Yeah. I never could fit Kenya into my schedule. Oh my. But this year, yeah. on the 50th anniversary of this nation's independence, right. this was the year. <laughs> so home. I can tell you, I can guarantee you, you are home. I'm home. You feel like you're home. Uh, do you have uh, rice and we have lots of rice. Cook rice with with beans? Yeah. That's your favorite? Yeah. It's called madondo. Ma, ma, madondo. <laughs> madondo. Okay. The, I want madondo. Hey, madondo. Madondo. Ma, madondo. 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 Yes. I want Madondo. Yes, Madondo. Oh, plenty Madondo. <laughs> Now there are about 10 million Kenyans. They don't know where Bahamas is and how Bahamas. Maybe in a minute. In yes. How is Bahamas? The Bahamas is a archipelago. That means it's a nation of many islands. Right. 700 islands make up the Bahamas. So the Bahamas is a beautiful place. Yeah. Uh, I pastor one of the largest churches in the Bahamas. Uh -huh. But I also am a businessman. Also I'm a consultant and advisor. Yeah. Also a leadership trainer. So I wear about seven different hats. Yes. Yeah. No, no, you're seven different hats. I mean, How do you combine? How do you manage your time? All I think vers vers books, versatility books, yeah. uh, is necessary for you to make it in the world today. Right. And I've found that there are three ways for you to, to have an effective life. Right. First, you must choose your priorities. Yeah. You must know exactly what you want. Right. Then you must organize your life based on those priorities. Right. And then you must discipline yourself to follow what you organize. Mm -hmm. In other words, follow your plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do in my life. Yeah. So the key to success really is, yeah. is not trying to do everything. Uh -huh. uh, defining what you were born to do. Mm -hmm and then document it yeah. and then plan your life around it yeah. and then focus on it and discipline yourself and i would teach people this that uh, the greatest discovery in life is the discovery of purpose purpose is is defined as original intent for creation in other words everything that exists yes. was created for an intentional reason birds were created to fly uh, fish created to swim seeds created to produce trees you therefore created to do something very specific Most of us never find it because our culture destroys it by giving us a career. You know, I believe for example, right. you, here you are, you have a gift of of uh, motivating people to enjoy life, to yeah. to 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 look at life in a in in a comical way, right. to to not be too serious. You have a gift of making people feel comfortable and laugh at themselves yeah. and at life. Yeah. That's a gift. Yes. Now, imagine you're trying to be a secretary in an office typing at a typewriter. You'll be depressed. Frustrated, so, right. Yeah, right. So your purpose is the thing that you love to do. Mm. It's also the thing that you have a natural passion for. Right. So every human being was born, you know, they say that a bird gets energy from flying. Right. A fish gets energy from swimming. Right. So when you find what you were born to do, it actually gives you energy, it doesn't kill you. Yeah. So if your job is killing you, you're yeah. not in your purpose. 
impressive. Now, uh, there's one thing uh, we suffering from in Africa in terms of leadership and mentorship. Yeah. Again, my response would be to get one of the books that I've just released. My, my latest book yeah. is on succession and mentoring. The book is called Passing It On. Pass passing on the power, yeah. passing on the authority, the passing on the influence. Right. And most of us, we don't want to pass it on uh, because the history of oppression produces a spirit of self-preservation. I'm going to repeat that. Oppression produces a spirit of self-preservation. When you've been restricted from having things that you really should have, yes. when you finally get them, yes. you want no one else to have them. Okay. That includes power, money, position, or influence. Right. So once you get it, yes. you kill all your enemies around you. Matter of fact, you think everybody's an enemy who wants to share your power. Yeah. So this is why we don't mentor people. The greatest act of leadership is actually mentoring. Yeah. Mentoring is preparing someone to take your place. The average leader in developing countries yeah. don't even want to lose his place. Yeah. He don't want to give up his place. Is it an he want to die problem, in his place. Is, is it an African problem? It's not an African problem. Yeah. It is an oppression problem. Oppression. Yeah. Because it's the same way in South America. It's yeah. the same way in the Far East and Pacific mm -hmm. where I've been. It's the same way in the Caribbean. Yeah. It's the same way here in Africa. Some people don't know that it's, east, it's, it's better to, to leave early than to stay too late. Yeah. In other words, don't wait for people to wish you were gone. Yeah. Because remember, you don't live on in buildings. You live on in people. Right. Jesus Christ, I believe, is the greatest leader that ever lived. He never built a building. Right. He simply built people. He left the early 11 young men. Today, we're still being impacted by them 2,000 years later. Yes. So a great leader and is that, one who, who identifies people yeah. and began to train them to take his place. Right. As a matter of fact, here's what I think is the greatest statement about succession. Yes. It's a simple statement. It is better for you yeah. that I go away. Because if I don't go away, you won't do greater work. Wow, that is better. It's one more time. <laughs> <laughs> it is better for you it's better. that I go away. Yes. Because if I don't go away, right. you won't do greater works. That statement was made by Jesus Christ. It's the most powerful leadership statement on succession. It's amazing. In other words, he was telling them, if I stay, yeah. I'm preventing your progress. So let me go. My absence creates your greatness. The youth of this country, just tell, you need to just talk to the youth of this country, 60% uh, of them, and um, they just need, they lack mentors, they, they lack role models. Yeah. They want to be inspired to realize those dreams. Uh, I think my story is probably the best story to tell our young friends watching a program today. Um, you know, I was born in colonialism in 1954, and I was born in a very poor family, 11 children. Yeah. I am number six. I was born sleeping on the floor on a mat. Uh, we were very, very poor, but we went to schools and my teacher, uh, most of my teachers were from Europe. They were either from England or Scotland or somewhere. And they actually told us as kids that we were not true humans. They said that you are black monkeys, your brains are not developed well, you cannot be educated properly. And I was told this as a kid. And I remember one day my teacher, Mr. Robertson, said to me that you are retarded, you cannot learn. He told me this. He was from Scotland. And he's, he had a class of 36 black kids. And he used to tell us all the time, I'm wasting my time trying to educate animals. And so I was very, very much uh, in, uh, oppressed by his statement, statement about yeah. me. And I went home to my mom and I told my mom, you know, uh, maybe he's right because I'm getting an F in my grades. Uh, everything is going wrong. Maybe I, maybe I am a half-breed monkey. You, you almost believed that. I almost believed it. And my mother held me by my collar, my dirty shirt. She shook me. She said, don't you ever repeat that again. You are not uneducable. You are not a monkey. You are not a black, uneducated fool. Mm. You are my son. Oh, yes. You are smart. Yes. And then my mother did something. She took this book that she was reading, and she turned to a chapter in the book, and she said to me, memorize that. Go in that closet, memorize it. And I went in this closet and memorized the statement from the book. And the, the statement simply said, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, far beyond all you can ever ask, think, or imagine, oh, yes. according to the power that worketh within you. Yes. Now that part got me. I was 13 years old. And I memorized that particular statement to the point where I could close the book and I could repeat it. And when I went and told my mom, I can repeat it. She said, repeat it. And I yeah. said, 
now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above far beyond all I can ever ask think or imagine according to the power that works within me she yeah. said that's my boy, that's she, my said, boy. she said say it again <laughs> so from that day yeah. I decided my, my mother says remember yeah. the power is not in your white teacher yeah. the power is in you yeah. it's not even in heaven it's in you yeah. she's like go to school and use the power mm -hmm. and I took a decision that day I would never let a teacher teach me again I took the algebra books, memorized all the formulas. I took the geometry book, memorized all the formulas. No, why, why aren't you rebuilding now? Ah, I refused to let a teacher teach me because I didn't trust a teacher anymore. So I decided to educate myself. In six months, my grades went from an F to an A. Oh my. Now, I became an A student because, and I'm saying it for young people, yes. sometimes young people allow other people to dictate what they should be. Right. I declared independence from other people's opinions and decided to educate myself. I became an A student and I graduated top of the school with the highest grades in the whole school at the end of the following year. When I graduated, they gave me a plaque. It says the most advanced, the most uh, progressed student. Right. I took the plaque to Mr. Robertson, my teacher, gave it to him. And I said, this is from a monkey. No, you didn't. I sure did. I might got whooping for it, but I took it. I want to remember that <laughs> monkeys can make A's. He's a monkey. But you're only poor. But ah. Ah, you're only poor. Ah, ah you're poor. You're poor. <laughs> you're only poor. You're poor. You're poor I'm telling That's you. That's great. I'm dangerous. So a few years ago, I went right. to England to teach a, a seminar in yeah. London. Yeah. Very quickly. And when I was finished, uh, I was autographing my books in the lobby in the hotel downtown London. Right. And an old man walks up with a cane. He was shaking very much. And uh, he was on the line with two of my books. One of them was very old and marked up. Yeah. The other book was brand new. I autographed the books for him. I said, thank you very much, sir. He looked at me and he wouldn't move. This old man, he was shaking with a cane. And I said, sir, uh, thank you very much for coming to the seminar today. Yeah. He said, yes, I appreciate that. Mm. I said, thank you, sir. There's a line behind you. Can you allow the others to come? I can autograph their books. And he just stood there looking at me. And then he started to weep. And he said, I used to live in the Bahamas. I said, really, where? He said, in Nassau. I said, sir, that's where I'm from. I said, what did you do in the Bahamas? He said, I was a teacher. I said, what school did you teach at? C.H. Reeves High School. I says, that's the school I went to. And then he says, you don't remember me, do you? I said, no, sir. And he said, I'm Mr. Robertson. I jumped up from my chair. I ran around the table. And I grabbed this old man. He was so sh frail and shaky. And we hugged each other. A black young man and an old white man hugging in a lobby downtown London filled with people. And he was crying. And he kept saying, I am so sorry. I said, Mr. Robertson, what are you sorry about? He said, your books are in our bookstores in Scotland. And I heard you were going to be in London. I took the tubes and took a ferry and came all the way here because I wanted to have you know that you are my teacher. I read your books and they changed my life. I said, Mr. Robertson, you mean this half-breed, retarded monkey <laughs> wrote a book that changed your life? And he, he hugged me and we wept at each other. And my point is this, young people, inside of you is an awesome author. Your teachers don't even know how good you are. Don't believe other people's opinions. God gave you birth for a reason. There's something you were born to do. And I want you to discover what you were born to do because what you were born to do is more important than what other people think you should be doing. So you don't need to wait until you are an adult to do great things. Start now. Do like David. Go kill a giant and make a name for yourself. Oh, yes. Unipoa. <laughs> Unipoa. 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 Yes. Thank you so much for thank coming you, through. Thank you. Thank you. You are our first guest in this exclusive church, uh, chat room. Thank and, you. And uh, always say the Asante Sana. In fact, you can tell them, uh, Natazama. Unatazama. Chacha Cho. Chacha Cho. Thank you. Abonipo. Chacha Cho. In Kenya, when we have a visitor, we normally have some little stuff for them. We don't uh -huh. have to leave you empty. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, I, a I get a gift? Uh, you got a gift. It's beautiful. special from us. Uh, it's called Living Africa. She has a story from all of Africa. You can open it. Beautiful, beautiful collection of African stories. Yeah, and of course, uh, pray for, for us, our family, sure our, 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 just say a prayer. Let's all bow together. We pray right now. Yeah, we. Mm. May many come to know you personally through this ministry of laughter mm. and joy. Thank you again for your hand upon your servant. Mm. Use him, Lord, to be your prophet of laughter. Mm. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And that's your new name. Thank you very much. Amen.
you have it.